Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace. This is episode 5 of 5 on language. You've made it all the way to the end. This is going to be awesome. So far, we've talked about in this series where languages come from, where they go, and where they die. We've also talked about how languages make your brain bigger and how you make up a language. But today, we're going to talk about what isn't a language. So, what isn't a language? How do you exclude something from language? Well, Animals are a good place to start. Do animals have languages? Some linguists argue that language is something that humans do alone. But we know that animals can communicate with each other. They don't really have language, though. At least not as we understand it. Renowned linguist Noam Chomsky claims that humans possess an innate universal grammar that is not possessed by other species. Evan McPhail, who is a well-known psychologist at Oxford, says that humans acquire language and animals do not, not because humans are quantitatively more intelligent, which would be my first thought, but because humans possess some species-specific mechanism or mechanisms, which is a prerequisite of language acquisition. That's kind of a complicated way, Mr. Oxford, to say that our brains have a language processor and not all animals or even any animals have those things. They can understand some rudimentary languages. You can teach some primates how to do sign language, for example. But whether they can understand and process language as a whole is a little more complicated to ascertain. We're not saying that animals are dumb. We're just saying that they don't necessarily have the same constructions inside of their brains to understand these complex things like we do. Maybe someday we'll evolve past languages, but don't think of it as ESP. You should check out our videos on senses for that because ESP, not a thing. But a lot of people have questions, and I've seen this on Twitter, I've seen this on the internet kind of as a whole, whether computer languages are considered language. I think that's a cool question. So in 2014 in Kentucky, a senator proposed a bill that would take computer programming classes and put them in foreign language credits. This was not the best idea. The bill was killed because it was seen as a threat to foreign language, although that wasn't the creator's intent. When we look at computer programming, we think of it as a programming language. So why not put it in that category? Well, there's a lot of reasons why not. Computer code, unfortunately, doesn't have the same construction as a natural language. For example, natural languages have a lot of idiom, they have a lot of metaphor. Things are different in different languages, but they also kind of portray the same meaning. Computer code is much more literal. If I say something in English like, I dropped the hammer on his ass, you probably would know that I don't have a hammer, I didn't literally hit somebody on the butt. And instead, I was maybe being hard on him. That's something that computer language doesn't understand. Computer language doesn't have that. There's examples in computer languages where a single piece of punctuation is out of place and the complete language breaks down. It doesn't work. So that literalness makes it very difficult to quantify computer code as language. So you're not necessarily talking to them, even though that's how we use the words out here in the real world. Based on what we've learned earlier, Computer code would have to have a high dependency length minimization, it'd have to have more natural processing, and it would have to evolve with usage, and computer code doesn't do any of those things. So it'd be very difficult to quantify that as a language. According to a piece in Huffington Post, which I thought was really good, maybe computer languages or learning computer coding should be a math and a science credit. That could be interesting. This is my two cents. Something really cool that maybe you were using earlier today, probably on your phone, are emojis. These are a cool thing that's happening in language right now. Emoji means picture character in Japanese, and they're essentially kind of a workaround. They're taking an emotion and putting it through in a pictogram. Emojis are little smiley faces. They come in various colors and shapes, and when we see a smiley face emoji on the internet, we, in our brains, react the very same way as if we saw a real face in real life. It's the same parts of the brain that activate. We see emoticons and emojis to be emotional communication. They speak to us in ideograms. They're not their own language, but they do boost social conversation in a very real way. Side note, by the way, just for fun, first documented use of the 
uh, emoticon, a colon and a little dash and then a little parenthesis, a little smiley face. That dates back to 1982. Scott Fallman proposed that it could be used as a joke marker on a message board for a Carnegie Mellon University. Sidebar, end sidebar. So emojis are cool because we look at those and we see an ideogram that means a specific emotion. We're going around language because body language is a way to do that, right? Primates have advanced systems of communication that includes vocalization, hand gestures, body language, and for humans, your body position, movements, and little micro expressions on your face are sending a stream of data to that person's subconscious. And this is actually more powerful. If you've taken communication classes, you probably know this. Nonverbal language is more powerful than verbal language. You know, it's only 10% what you say and so much percent how you sound and how you look. That's because nonverbal cues are very important. And it's basically more information with less effort. And emojis are sort of tapping into that. It's almost like this strange nonverbal communication via computer. But in the end, what is language, right? Language is a way of communicating. Language is part of a wider way of communicating. And language has rules, and it develops in the brain in a very specific way. It has intricacies, it has slang, it has idioms. And language has a starting point. It evolves, and sometimes it makes a social and cultural impact on people. The language can show how we look at the world like, remember, with the pink, different shades? But in the end, language is none of those things. That's just how we look at the thing that we created that we call language. Language has meaning because we say it has meaning. Language is the manifestation of the thoughts that we all share. When I look at a salt shaker, I know how to say salt shaker. But in my mind, I'm seeing something completely different. These wisps of chemical and electrical energy are flitting around inside of these meat lockers that we call skulls, and we invented this thing called language to express that chemical interaction to each other. Language is just our way of describing our little wisps. Pretty cool. I hope you feel like you understand a little bit more about language, and if you don't, make sure you check out all five of our episodes if you haven't already. They're all pretty amazing, I'd like to think so. Subscribe for more Test Tube Plus so you can see us again tomorrow and each week after that. If you can't wait though, check out last week's episode on weather and climate change. They're very, very cool. And be sure to come back again tomorrow for our next series. You can come find me on Twitter if you have suggestions. Tell us down in the comments as well. You can find me on Twitter at Trace Dominguez. And thanks for watching Test Tube Plus.